Hey everyone, this is Nathan Williams with BlackIron79.com. I'm back here with another hand history review for you guys. So this hand was sent to me by Steve, and this hand was played at the uh, 888 Euro tables. And Steve was dealt ace-jack uh, offsuit under the gun, and it's only five-handed, so a fairly short-handed table. Um, so opening for 3x there is totally standard in my opinion, um, especially five-handed, so... Uh, We'll see how the action plays out here. So villain 14 in the small blind decides to call and villain 15 in the big blind decides to go for the old click it back mini three bets. So I think you guys can already tell what kind of player type we're up against here, but I'll go through the uh, the HUD stats anyways. Uh, so this guy is a 58-4-2. Uh, that's VPIP, PFR, and AF. If you guys don't know what those mean, those are HUD stats. Uh, I'll leave in the link, a link in the description below if, so you guys can get this uh, on your poker table if you want. Basically what these stats tell me though, a 58-4-2 is a massive, massive whale fish, recreational player, fun player, whatever you want to call it. I don't like to say anything for 100% in poker, but I'm pretty sure there's almost nobody in the history of poker who plays a 58-4-2 uh, who's ever been a whale player. <laughs> Uh, clearly a recreational player we can already see uh, with the uh, click it back mini three bet again not a, uh, a play that I would recommend um, definitely would not recommend that uh, <laughs> because everyone's just gonna call as you see here basically a, a bet like that just gives nobody any incentive whatsoever to fold and it just uh, mathematically doesn't make much sense so Anyways, uh, we'll keep all of this in mind going to the flop. Actually, one other thing to point out is this guy has a 3-bet of 10. Um, that Once again, that's villain 15, the recreational player. Uh, 10 is quite high. Uh, so again, he's going to have a wide range in this spot. Cl definitely not just aces and kings. Uh, he's going to have all sorts of broadways, all sorts of maybe suited aces, suited connectors, stuff like that. So... Again, we'll keep all of that in mind going to the flop, and let's go see that flop. So it is a uh, very draw-heavy jack-8, four, two diamonds. So on the face of it, it's a pretty good flop for us. Uh, obviously, we've got top pair, top kicker. We've got the backdoor nut flush draw as well because we have the ace of diamonds in our hand. But again, it is a very draw-heavy board. There are a ton of different straight draws on this board. You guys can see that. The 9-10, of course, is the obvious one. And there's numerous other gut shots, like a 7-5, a 7-6, um, all sorts of hands like that. A queen-10 is another gut shot on this board. So uh, let's just jump right into the action here. So we're going to be acting last, of course, because the two players, uh, our two opponents in this are in the blinds. So we got a check from villain 14, and we got a... And so we got a C-bet of just over half pot from villain 15, who, remember, was the pre-flop mini three-better. So, so Steve decides to call here, which... Um, I think it's a little bit debatable. I definitely don't mind a raise in this. I, I would pr probably lean a little bit more towards raise, to be honest. Uh, considering the player type, uh, once again, we talked about with the three bet of ten, he can have a wide range in this hand in this spot. Definitely not just big pairs and stuff like that. So I think that we're definitely ahead of this player's range. Um, and there's so many draws in this board, so. While I don't think the call is terrible by any means, it's only folding would be terrible here. Uh, the call's not terrible, uh, but I do think that a raise is definitely the superior play in, the, in this spot here. So anyways, let's see what happens. So villain 14 folds and we go to the turn, which is the deuce of diamonds. So uh, pretty decent card, to be honest. I mean, it gives us one to the nut flush now. Um, since we have the ace of diamonds in our hand, it makes it pretty unlikely that he's on a diamond draw himself. It, it makes it less likely anyways um and the deuce just really doesn't change anything it's not going to complete complete any straight draws of course um so a pretty good card for us overall so what does he decide to do okay so villain uh, 15 decides to put his full fishiness on display for everyone here and bet one eighth of the pot roughly uh one this is basically a nothing bet i've talked about this uh, many times in videos on my blog i, I talked about it in crushing the micro stakes my first book and if you've read that book, you know that I specifically say that with meaningless, basically mathematically meaningless bets like this, that I, I recommend that you just ignore them and just pretend that he checked, basically. So, um, because it's, it's just a nothing bet, you know. Um, and a lot of times people will get roped into doing what Steve does here and just calling, and, and that almost legitimizes this as a bet. Um, I would rather pretend he checked and just make a bet in a situation like this. We clearly need to bet for value at this at this stage of the hand. 
I think that we're so far ahead and uh, I don't like playing this little game of just calling his nothing bet and basically just giving him another free card to potentially draw out on us in the river here. But also, we're just not getting value. He can definitely have tons of of made hands that are worse than us. He can have a king jack. He can have a queen jack. We're missing so much value versus these hands. Um, he could have an eight. I think he will clearly call a $3 bet here with an eight as well. So while I do think that it's a, a tiny bit debatable on the flop, the just call, I, I prefer a raise on the flop. I think that this is on the turn. We're definitely uh, making a serious mistake here in not getting more money in the pot. So l with that said, though, let's go to the river. The river comes uh, pretty good for us once again. <laughs> Obviously, we got top two pair now. Uh, none of the straight draws got there unless somehow on earth he had three five. <laughs> um, so um, feeling pretty good about our hand at this point. Um, again, it's pretty unlikely the guy's got diamonds since we have the ace of diamonds in our hand as well. So what does villain decide to do? So he decides to make something like a reasonable bet. This is what recreational players do, by the way, as you guys probably know. They're It's just chaos. They're one minute they're betting full pot. The next minute it's it. The next time it's one tenth the pot. Then it's half. You just never know. I don't even think they know what they're doing. They're just randomly clicking buttons. So, the only <laughs> the only thing that we need to decide here is what is the best play on the river here. Um, Steve decides to go for a call once again. So I'm gonna actually disagree once again in this spot here. I do think that we are missing quite a bit of value by not raising in this spot here. I think that with top two. With everything that I've talked about, the player type, how he can have a wide range, um, I think that we are so, so far ahead of his range on this river that I think we can raise for value here and get a lot of calls from worse hands. Um, I have some of the highest win rates of all time in this specific game at NL2, and I've talked about it a fair bit in the past of... I think the biggest, one of the biggest reasons why is because I don't let fish get off light. I make them pay the absolute maximum every single time. And I think that you need to remember as well, look at the amount of stack that's behind in this hand. There are 75 big blinds effective behind in this hand. If he's got a hand that he can call with, remember fish don't like to fold either. They, I mean, there's a chance that he's got ace king here. He's not folding. Right, I, a lot of fish won't fold ace king if you ship the river here. Um, they just don't fold. They don't fold top pairs hands <laughs> like that. Right, we all know that. So, the difference between just calling here and not getting that seventy-five big blinds that's behind there when he's got a hand to call with is colossal for your win. It's it's for your win rate. It's literally the whole world. People ask me, how did you get 20 big blinds per 100, 30 big blinds per 100? How do you do that in these games? That's how. I'm raising the river all in here um, so that I'm getting their full stack when they do have something to call me down with. And um, this actually is one of those hands where he had one of those hands where he would have absolutely certainly called it all off. Now... As I always talk about, we always want to look at the process in poker. We don't ever want to look at a specific hand and say, I mean, because it's super simple to look at this and say, oh, it's a huge mistake to not jam the river. But of course, we didn't know at the time that he has ace four. Uh, he can have a wide variety of holdings here. And once again, on, or on occasion, he will have a hand that beats us, in fact. And we ship the river here and you look like a complete idiot. But if we run this play over a hundred times, a thousand times, again, that's that's really what we need to always be focusing on in poker. The process and 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 the profitability over this of this play over a large, large sample, I think, versus this player type, as we talked about, a huge recreational player with a wide, wide range, with a lot of a lot of hands I think he can have that are second best, and just the fact that we know that fish don't like to fold. I think that there was definitely value, a ton of value, quite frankly, missed by not shipping the river here. And I think that better decisions could have been made uh, earlier in the in the hand as well. The flop is a little bit debatable, uh, but the turn I definitely would uh, prefer a raise as well. So uh, thank you for sending me this hand, Steve. I really hope that my analysis was useful for, for you. I hope the rest of you guys that watch this video hope that my analysis was helpful for you as well. 
But I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. Perhaps you disagree. Perhaps you would have played it a different way. Uh, make sure you let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe uh, if you enjoy seeing hand history reviews like this. I'm putting them out all the time. And um, lastly, make sure you download a copy of my free ebook, Poker Strategy Guide. It's called Massive Profit at the Micros. It's the top link in the description below. And that'll give you my complete strategy on how I crush these stakes. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. It's been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com.